Hey there, and welcome back to another tutorial of uh, mesh generation using Enova CFD. So in this new tutorial, we're going to show you uh, the motorbike aerodynamics tutorial, but uh, just to make it clear, this is not open phone uh, motor, uh, motorbike tutorial. This is a different tutorial. It's the same idea, the motorbike, but now we are using overset meshes to do the whole simulation. But this is the real deal, okay? The wheels are rotating, the motorbike is moving, we have relative velocities and so on. So this is the most, let's say, the most complex level of, of simulation that we can reach with this motorbike tutorial. And we can exploit all this using uh, overset meshes. So before showing you the results and the approach taken, I would like to uh, to acknowledge the work done by James. James, he, we gave him a, uh, an academic license and he used it during his master thesis and he conducted this wonderful work. I have to say that uh, he, uh, he, he managed to do all the machine, the simulation, everything with minimum uh, user support. So you can get an idea that in our CFD is a very friendly, easy to use tool that can give you uh, wonderful results. So before I uh, passing uh, everything to James to, to show you everything, how he uh, set up everything, let me show you what we're talking about here. when. Uh, when I mentioned now that is the motorbike tutorial and with overset meshes. Okay, so if you look at the screen, this is what we're ref uh, we're referring to. So we have here these two uh, animations, a few frames of what we have done. All the work was conducted by Jen, so kudos to Jen again that he managed to do that. Uh, with minimum uh, user, uh, supervision for from Inova. And what is happening here is that look at the wheels that both of them are rotating and also the motorbike is moving. So what we have here is overset meshes. So we have four component meshes and everything interacting uh, together. So we're using uh, polyhedral meshes which is the, my preferred type, but it's up to you. Now, I know will let you use poly or tetra meshes. Also, you can create perfect uh, prismatic layers when it comes to resolving the boundary layer. So at this point, you have an idea of what is going to happen. And I would like to pass now the presentation to uh, James that it will uh, drive you through all the steps how to do this. Okay, so before passing the presentation to James, I want to remind you that if you are in academia, if you are in a student, feel free to contact us here in the screen. You have our contact details and we will be able to, to give you a license to use uh, Inova for your academic research. Hi there. My name is James. I'm a master's student at the University of Stellenbosch and I'm researching motorcycle aerodynamics. I've been granted an academic license for Enova CFD to tackle my research problem. And I've been working with Professor Joel Guerrero, who is the CTO of Wolf Dynamics. And he is partnered with Enova Technologies to help educate people how, on, on how to use Enova. So this is just a video to show you some of the capabilities of Enova CFD and how one can use it in conjunction in conjunction with OpenFOAM to to set up a computational fluid dynamic simulation. So for for this video, I'll be simulating a motorcycle accelerating from rest to to 30 meters per second over a period of three seconds. And um, I'm going to be using overset meshing with four different component meshes. So the simulation will be a transient simulation that's incompressible. And the four component meshes are starting from the highest level, the, the front wheel, which has its own overset patch, and then the rear wheel with, a, with an overset patch, and then the 
second highest or the second lowest level mesh will be the a, a overset patch that surrounds the motorcycle body, so the, the portions that don't make up the wheel, the wheels, and then the highest level, well, sorry, the lowest level will be the um, the background mesh, which houses, if you will, all the other meshes in within this background. So all of the all of the meshes are going to be moving, um, so that we don't have to have a very large um, background mesh, and the movement that we're going to um, create for each overset patch is will be different. So that for the front wheel. For the front wheel component mesh, we'll have a rotating and a translating zone. And then for the rear wheel, we'll have a rotating and a translating zone. And then for this motorcycle body mesh that includes the overset patch, or well, this the this overset patch over here, that'll be translating at the same translation speed as the wheels. And then the background mesh will also be translating, but it won't it won't have it won't have a like boundary conditions that that assume the same velocity as the translation it will just be basically a way to will keep it moving with the rest of the components even though it doesn't actually have a velocity so it's it is quite a quite a complicated it's challenging um, meshing process but um, I've broken it all up into steps for you using Enova and Enova does make it quite manageable and um, easy to actually set up quite a complicated mesh like this. So we'll start off by creating the meshes and then we'll set up the the um, we'll set up the, the case files using using Enova as well. So I just import the geometry the geometry by dragging and dropping it. The feature angle over here is set at 30 degrees. So you can also just import by opening basically. And it's set at 30 degrees here, the feature angle. Uh, just to make things quick, I just quickly dragged and dropped it, but for the other ones we'll import them. And this geometry consists of an overset patch along with the front wheel surface. So I've selected all the faces here. That will be the overset and I'm going to move it to that overset patch. And now we have the two patches. The front wheel geometry you can see here there are sometimes some extra feature edges that you don't really want. So I mean here's one for instance that will the meshing algorithm will try and resolve that feature edge so we can actually remove that and we're left with the, all the important feature edges that get um, highlighted. Um, just another thing with what I found with this um, method of importing the geometry like this um, the this inner surface, the front wheel, the normals of this have to be facing inwards. So normally, if you if this was a surface that you weren't trying to create like a cavity from, then the 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 normals would be facing outwards. But we kind of want to subtract this from the um, the cylindrical volume and create like. Um, and an absence of this kind of thing in the volume. So the normals have to be flipped um, in order for the meshing algorithm to to find the correct volume. Speaking of finding volumes, so now that we've got these two patches, we can use the find volume function. And here this volume consists of both the overset patch and the front wheel patch. And over here, we've got just the front wheel patch, and we don't need that anymore. Um, if I can just show this to you. Yeah, so that's the volume there. We're going to delete that. We don't need it anymore. And now we're left with the volume that that the meshing software will, that Enova will, will mesh. 
So we'll just set up the basic global cell sizing and then we'll do a mesh, a topology based mesh, and then we'll remesh that. I just found that remeshing usually gives me better quality cells with um, a lower or non orthogonality. So I usually do that and it just also yeah, it smooths out the, the mesh that comes from the topology based mesh. So I'll use a global cell size of 0 0.075 meters, 75 millimeters, and we'll just do the surface mesh here. And we can run the topology based mesh. And here we're left with the quite a coarse mesh, mesh, which is good because all these things are going to be moving and, and it's a transient simulation. So we want to keep the mesh current number low without having to use a really small time step. Um, and also just have less cells because um, it's just less computationally expensive. So at this point, we can set the local cell sizing and then run the remeshing. So the front wheel surface, I want to have quite a bit smaller cell size. Um, so 7.5 7 millimeters is the maximum cell size that I'd like. And I also want to create a uniform mesh. So I'm going to specify the minimum size as the same as the maximum. Um, and then I'm going to have two prism layers each 2.5 millimeters thick. Okay, we can apply those meshing parameters. And then for the overset mesh or the overset patch, I just want I want to keep the, the same global size. Keep it the same as the global size that we just meshed. Okay, then at this point we can remesh. Now that we've specified the the um, local cell sizing, okay, and then from here we can inspect just that front wheel patch. Yeah, so you can see all the important feature edges that we wanted have been captured. The cells are very uniform, more or less the same size. And now we can convert this to a polyhedral mesh with a boundary layer. We use that, we select the polyhedral option and the boundary layer, and then we run the TED fill mesh. So it will first create tetrahedra with the prism layers and then it will remesh, will convert it to a polyhedral mesh. There are some interesting looking cells on the surface over here, but none of them are invalid. You can check the volumes are, none of them invalid. And the minimum volume is on the, on the scale of 10 to the negative nine. Which is quite small, but there is just some geometry, or there are just some cells that, you know, it's probably because of the the um, the two point five millimeter boundary layer, but yeah, you know, most of them, yeah, you know, it's it's the cells close to the to the surface there in the boundary layer at the sharp edges, but they should still be fine. Um, we can also inspect the non orthogonality. Orthogonality is fine, it's a bit high, 81, but we can just put in some non orthogonal correctors and the mesh will still run. Okay, so that's the that's the front wheel mesh completed. So we can save this and we can import the <coughs> we can import the rear wheel and pretty much do the same, and then we'll get. We'll do the background mesh and we'll get back to doing the setting up the open foam case files. 
So just before we get a, get to setting up the the rear wheel, um, we can just take a look at the volume mesh uh, and the layers, just using an, a cut plane. So you can see uh, this isn't the best color to view it sometimes. Uh, let's just change that to um, a different color. Yellow is usually very vibrant. Let's just redo the cut plane. Okay, you can see the the volume mesh over here. The cells over here are quite nice, and there's 2.5 millimeter layers close to the surface. This, um, I suppose, this expansion over here from the 2.5 millimeter layers to the to the to the 75 millimeter, it could cause problems later, but it should still work and you know for the purposes of this video i'm not trying to make things perfect here i'm just really trying to illustrate the the capabilities of enova okay so we can we can import the the rear wheel now um i'll first close this we've saved it already so now we can import the rear wheel Thirty degree feature angle as well, and it's pretty much the same. Still got that cylinder. The cylinder is a bit bigger because the rear wheel is larger. But same process as before. We move it to a group called Overset. I'm assuming that there is some prior knowledge of Overset meshing with Open Foam um, before you kind of, or for you to understand this video. Um, but basically, all the overset, there has to be one overset patch in the whole simulation, and that will be like the combined overset patch for the front wheel, the rear wheel, the motorcycle body as well. So all that will be combined into one overset patch. Um, and Enova will help us to, to do that. So here's the rear wheel. There are some feature edges that I do want to get rid of over here. There's ones up on the surface on the on the edge over here. So we can just delete those. The geometry is not the best, but that's the beauty of Enova as well. You can just very nicely select which feature edges you don't want to capture. So we've got a couple here. And you also have some at the hub over here, which will introduce some very small cells, which you're trying to avoid. Let me actually just change this color because it is a little bit difficult to see. Let's make it red. There we go. That's better. Mm. I think that's all on this side. There's some over here that we don't want. Can remove that. Can remove this one and this one. Oops, that's not the right thing. Just remove here. Okay. All the important feature edges are there. And we can now kind of perform the same tactic. So we'll find the volume, find the volumes and get rid of the rear wheel volume that we don't want. And we group the contents. And we can now do the topology based mesh using using a global size of 75 millimeters. This um, refinement number for the the circumferential um, discretization of the of the, um, the cylindrical surface. I don't think going anything higher than eight is really necessary for for the purpose of this video. If you want to create a very fine coarse, if a very fine, highly 
high resolution mesh, then I would look at maybe upping that and obviously your cell size as well. But yeah, I think this will suffice for now. So we'll just do the topology based mesh. Looks very similar to our front wheel. There are some there are some um, bumps and whatnot here. Just because those feature edges haven't been resolved, maybe it would be a better idea to increase the feature edge and then you can capture those edges over there. But this should be fine for what, what we're doing for the video. And we'll just remesh it and it'll smooth that out as well. So we're gonna set the local sizing now. So the maximum size for the local sizing is the same as the global maximum and minimum size. Just to create a nice uniform mesh. And then for the rear wheel, we have that 7.5 millimeter minimum size and maximum size. And we're also gonna have two prism layers what is the 2.5 millimeter starting layer? Okay, and then we can remesh that. Okay, so we can inspect the surface meshes here. And it's smoothed it out very nicely. Um, the uniform cell sizes everywhere. And um, now we'll do the the tet fill mesh with a boundary layer and then we'll convert it to a polyhedral. Same procedure as with the with the front wheel. Okay, once again, on the surface mesh, there are some interesting looking cells, but they are still all polyhedra. It will tell you over here in this, it'll tell you what kind of cells the, the mesh consists of, but nothing invalid. And we are down to the level of 10 to the negative 10, which is quite small. But yeah, for the purposes, of this video should be should be fine. You can always improve on this by, you know, really taking time to test the, what cell sizing works best and capturing all the, the feature edges that you need. Yeah, it's that takes time. Quite a high non-orthogonality. Um, it will still run, but uh, that you likely want to get that down uh, and there's quite a few cells in that region um, yeah that is that is quite a high non-orthogonality but it should still run we've got non-orthogonal correctors we, we've got the option to put non-orthogonal correctors in so we can we can still get success with this mesh and then we can inspect the the volume just by doing another plane cut. Yeah, so the, the non orthogonality issues are likely in these very sharp angles. Um, you can probably just run the, the, the mesh again, try and remesh um, or restart it, and we might get off lucky with a little bit lower non orthogonality, but yeah, that you can try out with your own geometries and. It's always good just to have a, a really good surface geometry to, to avoid these um, these issues. Okay, so we've done the done the now we've done the um, the rear wheel volume mesh, and we can save that, and we can move on to the background or the the motorcycle body. Okay, so we've made the meshes for the front and the rear wheel 
and now we're moving on to the motorcycle body and its overset patch. So we can start off as usual by importing an STL. Um, I'm going to use a feature angle of 30 degrees for this geometry as well. And as you can see, this is just a the motorcycle body itself. <clears throat> so we need to create mm -hmm. a patch, um, an overset patch that will surround this uh, geometry. And it's got to be able to accommodate the front and the rear wheels, the rear wheel meshes. Um, however, the overset patches from the rear wheel and the front wheel can extend past this overset patch. And actually, with Open Firm 2212, it can also, um, those overset patches can extend outside of the domain. <clears throat> So we can use the create box tool and we want to capture the wake and obviously include the front and rear wheel as close to the lower wall as possible. And we can also capture the near field flow structures um, just by using the right uh, dimensions for this box. So we'll call this patch overset and we'll make it negative one in the x direction which is to the right of the motorcycle and then upstream we can also make it negative one meters in the negative in the y direction and then the z direction is below the negative z direction extends below the ground and the wheel geometries do extend slightly lower than zero for this case so I'm just going to make that lower value negative 0 0.01 just to make sure that the the wheel the walls of the of the wheel and the, the front wheel and the rear wheel don't extend past the the domain because then the overset meshing won't work it's only the overset boundaries that can extend outside of the domain that's in open foam version 2212 and then i'll make the total width of this patch two meters so from negative one to one and then we'll make the total length um, seven meters. So we'll make this six, st uh, starting from zero. So that's six meters downstream. And then we'll make the total height two meters. Okay, and then we have our overset patch. And now before we find volumes, it doesn't really matter, you can do it this after you've found the volumes, but we need to insert a, a refinement zone for the front and rear wheel so that there's a good interpolation between the smaller cells in the rear wheel and this and this domain, the smaller cells in the rear wheel and the front wheel, as well as a thin box density on the, the path that the wheels will travel um, just to ensure a good interpolation between the the wheels and the and the lower portion of this domain here, which will also go into the into the background domain. So that's three densities in total. We can start off with the front wheel. So we can create a cylindrical density and call it front wheel. And then we'll make it negative 0 0.1 meters in the to the right of the motorcycle. This is now surrounding the front wheel. And then it's important that if you've got your wheels, you know what the location of their rotational axes is, well, because we need to specify that um, for both this density and also later on when we define the dynamic mesh dictionary and um, yeah, how they'll be moving about the axis. So. The, the, I know the, the location of the, the axis for the front wheel and the rear wheel for my geometry. So um, it's uh, negative 0 0.0506 in the y direction and then 0 0.35172 in the z direction. It's not completely centered. Um, but that can be simply changed, but just for the purposes of this video, we'll leave it like that. And then 
Oh, I see I've clicked a sphere density. I meant to click a cylindrical density. No matter. We'll just make... Do the same again. So negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.00506. I'm making the y and the z, the location of the of the axis quite accurate so as to um, to get the exact center of the of the axis of the front wheel. And then negative uh, positive three eight three five one seven two. And then 0 0.1, so that's the total width is 0 0.2 meters of this cylinder, cylinder. And then the same location for the axis on the other endpoint. And then over here, the radius we can set as slightly larger than the wheel itself. And then the size, we want to make that the same size as the overset patch in for the front and the rear wheel. So 0 0.075, 0 0.075 meters. You can't really see that so well. But all these other parameters you can leave the same and we don't want the density to rotate at all. So we can just specify it like that. And now you'll see here there is the front wheel density. Okay, and then for the rear wheel, we can do much of the same. So here we'll make it slightly larger because the wheel the wheel is a bit wider, the rear wheel, zero, negative 0 0.125. And then the location of this one's axis is 1.707675. And then 0 0.3826. The end point is 0 0.125, so it's 250 millimeters in width, and 1.70675, and then 0 0.3826 as well, and we'll make it 0 0.383, the total radius. Okay, and then the size is 0 0.075, 75 millimeters. All right, now we should have both the front and the rear wheel densities in the correct locations. And lastly, we need to insert a, the track along which the wheels will, well, the wheels will rotate. So we can make this, let's make it 0 0.7075. Let's make it 0 0.125, the size of the rear wheel in width, negative 0 0.125, starting from there. And we'll make it go to 0 0.125, so 250 millimeters in width. And then the length, we can make the full length of the domain. And we can start it from the bottom, the floor. And then, okay, so here it's actually asking for the full size. So we need to be 0 0.25 in width. And then it needs to be eight long, and that'll extend, no, seven long, and that'll extend to the end of the domain. Mm -hmm. And then this K size is the height that we want to make it, so we can make this two cells in height. And we can set it to be 0 0.075. So you can see here we have the track that it will pass through. So hopefully some good interpolation will happen there. I think maybe we can just make it a bit smaller actually. So let's just make it one cell in height. All right. That should be okay. All right, let's just quickly rename these for specificity sake. Let's reveal. Just so we don't get confused. And then you can call this one the track. Okay, so now we've got our densities here. Now we can go back to the finding of the volumes. Uh, so we can just do that quite simply. 
and as usual we don't want the um, the volume of just the motorcycle body we want the volume that contains the two of those and we delete this so now we we just have the the overset patch with the cavity of the RR as the volume and here we can start setting up the global meshing parameters so in order to capture the in order to capture the um, the geometry of the motorcycle we'll start off with a cell size of 0 0.075 and then we'll remesh with maximum and minimum sizes so let's go here to the so we just do a surface mesh only and then once we've done that then you can specify the local cell sizing and remesh so we'll do a topology based mesh with just a surface mesh so as you can see there's a lot more faces here and the volume is just a lot larger as well so it will take a little bit longer than and with the front and the rear wheels. Okay, there we have it. The, the cell size is quite fine on the overset patch, but it's more important that we've captured the geometry of the motorcycle, which we have done. So this cell size here is obviously not 0 0.075 millimeters. The feature edges and these kind of singularities over here mean that, well, the topology-based meshing algorithm will decide almost what cell size to use, but it won't exceed a maximum cell size of 0 0.075 meters. So now in order to get rid of these smaller cells, we can remesh after setting up some local cell sizing. So we can go here with the overset patch. We'll use a maximum cell size and a minimum cell size of 0 0.25 meters. And then for the, oops, I forgot to apply those parameters. This will create a uniform overset patch. And then over here, we can make the maximum size 0 0.075 and the minimum size 0 0.075. And we can make three layers. Let's make three layers of 0 0.5, 0 0.005 meters, so five millimeters. All right. Now we've got those local cell sizes defined. We can just remesh, and we should get a much more uniform surface mesh on the motorcycle. And as you can see as well, a much more uniform mesh for the overset patch. Okay, so that's quite coarse. I think we can maybe we can we should definitely refine that a little bit um, so let's restart the topology based mesh so let's just quickly get rid of those parameters from here also I suppose that we can leave Okay, and then let's remesh um, with a topology based mesh. Let's reset those parameters. OK, 
Okay, so the overset patch will keep it at 0 0.25. And then we can apply that. And then for the motorcycle body, we can make it a maximum of 0 0.075, 0 0.075. And then a minimum of 7.5 millimeters. This should produce a bit more of a fine mesh. There we are. Now we can inspect it. Okay, so that's a much better surface mesh. Those small cell sizes have been they've been enlarged and um, it's a nice smooth surface mesh capturing most of the important feature edges and there should be good a good starting point to grow the layers and use um, and fill the volume mesh so we can start doing that here or you can just actually do them both in one step so we've specified our boundary layer our boundary layers for the overset patch and we can just convert it to a polyhedral mesh as well so this should take quite a not quite a while but it should take considerably longer than the front and the rear wheel um, considering that there's a larger volume and also just more feature edges more faces so i have found though in general that out of a lot of other meshing softwares that i've used innova is very efficient it um, it does these steps quite quickly so once we finished up here with the with this um, this is the last of the the moving meshes that will actually um, have have a velocity like all velocities and whatnot the the last thing we have to mesh is just a background mesh which will be slightly larger than this and it will also move but it won't the walls won't have any inlet conditions that give it velocity so it's basically just a domain that's moving with the rest of of the mesh the component meshes and then we can get to setting up the case files All of the meshing that we've done so far can be done with shrink wrap meshing. If you have a dirtier geometry, geometries consisting of multiple volumes, this whole approach can be tackled with shrink wrap meshing. The quality might not be as good, but it will be it will be doable, and the the difference might not even be noticeable. Okay, so here's our volume mesh. Um, you can see we've got a surface polyhedral mesh as well. Uh, we have less than a million cells to capture this geometry, which I think is quite something. Um, yeah, it's quite difficult to get all these feature edges and everything so well resolved with such few cells. So I think um, this is really where um, Innova's capabilities of other meshing softwares does um, shine. 
you can inspect the volume mesh in the layer with this with a plane cut in the layers. So you can see there we've got a perfect boundary layer, even at really sharp, high convex angles. Um, covers pretty much the whole, even in these really tight spots, there are still some, at least one or two boundary layers produced. We can also inspect the non-orthogonality. Uh, let's take a look here. So we do have quite a high non-orthogonality, non but it will still run most of the cells. The, the average non-orthogonality is 20 degrees, which is very low. There's only 260 cells above 80. I mean, we have a, a, t a total cell count of 490,000 cells. So I think that's pretty okay. Um, yeah, this should suffice for the purposes of what we're trying to do here. You can see this cell size as well is relatively well resolved, so we can capture most of the wake. And our cell volumes, so I'm expecting it, it to be on the magnitude of, yeah, okay, that's quite small, but most of them, the average cell size is quite high. So once again, we're not going for perfection here. I'm just trying to illustrate here what, what we can do with with ENOVA. So these small cells will likely be, you know, in the sharp corners and um, where, where the feature angles are. Okay, so we've made the motorcycle body mesh, so now we can move on to the final background mesh and then we can set up the case files. Let's save this. And then we can move on. Okay, so now that we've done the motorcycle body and the two wheels, we just need to create the background mesh. So we can't really, I, have, I don't think you can just start from like a blank document to create like a box or something. So what I'll do is I'll just open an, the arbitrary um, STL file and then we can just delete it. Uh, whoops, the group of contents. And then from here, we can create a box. So we'll make it slightly wider than the, a meter wider in, in, in the X direction on either side than the overset patch for the motorcycle body. And we'll make it a meter wider in the front. So upstream of the motorcycle body. And then we'll make it this in line with the overset patch of the motorcycle body on the ground. And then the endpoints will be two meters wide. And then also oh, four meters in total is the width of the of the domain, of the background domain. And then we'll make it one meter longer than the overset patch of the motorcycle body. And we'll make it three meters high. And that should give us our background mesh. Okay, there we have it. Okay, and at this point, we just need to put in one more refinement zone on the lower wall in the same way we did with the overset or the, um, the volume mesh for the motorcycle body. We can also just call it track. And we'll make it the same size as as the um, the track of the overset uh, of the of the motorcycle body refinement zone, and we'll make it extend the full length of the domain as well. Minus two in the y, and then in the z negative zero point zero one. Uh, and then one zero point two five for the width, and then the length will be eight, 
No. Yeah. No, negative two, two, seven. So that'll be nine. Let's just do this quick as well. And it's got a nice view. Yeah, so that's covering the whole width. And then the height, you can make it one cell size high. Okay. And then the sizing, you can make it 0 0.075. Right, there we have it. That's our track refinement zone. That's basically all the that we need to do there. Okay, lastly as well, we need to define our, our patches for the background domain. So I'm going to use the same notation as the open foam um, patches for the motorcycle the motorcycle simulation, the steady state motorcycle simulation that they've got. So we can call this the inlet. Sorry, negative Y. I think this is the inlet actually, yeah. Okay, so inlet. Then we have the lower wall. Then we can select both of these patches. We can call them front and back. And then we have the upper wall. And the outlet. All right, and now we can specify our local or our global meshing. We don't need to do any local meshing here. Because of this refinement zone here, it will automatically size the cells accordingly there. And we can make the cell size 0 0.25, which is the same as the as the overset patch cell sizing. I always have to find a volume lastly. And there's only the one volume consisting of all these patches. Right, 0 0.25. And we can we can do all the meshing, the surface plus the volume mesh with prisms. We don't need any layers, um, any boundary layers or anything to for the lower wall because even though this lower wall will be stationary, will be, will be a, um, a wall, there won't be any airflow past it. It's a stationary wall. We're actually moving the motorcycle through the domain, but with the trick of moving this domain with the motorcycle without specifying any velocities on the or inlet conditions or any moving velocities or inlet conditions. All right, so you can just set the maximum global size to 0 0.25. And we can do the surface plus volume mesh with prisms, and we can convert it to a polyhedral mesh as well. So, so yeah, it'll, we can click here as well. Let me just do a topology-based mesh. This shouldn't take very long. And there we have it. We've got the track. We've got our average 0 0.25 meter cell size. We've got all our patches defined. We can. We can check the non-orthogonality. This shouldn't be a problem at all. Very low non-orthogonality. Um, cell volumes also very low. Or very high, should I say. Nothing wrong with this mesh. So at this point, we can save it. And we can call it all. And now we have all our meshes. Okay, so now that we've created all the meshes, the background mesh and the component meshes, we can start setting up the case files for OpenFoam using Enova. So to do this, we just go to the Setup OpenFoam tab. And for all the component meshes, so the front wheel, the rear wheel, and the RR 
motorcycle body, we don't have to really worry too much about what goes on in the control deck in terms of the de decomposition for parallel running and um, the timing and everything and the right times and the run times. We just have to make sure that we select the right version of open foam that we're using and set overset mesh enabled and obviously if we're doing the component meshes they will be the overset meshes and obviously we also need to select uh, the type of um, solver that we're going to use so we're using the incompressible solver um, with a piezo simple uh, coupled algorithm for um, overset meshes so that's all we need to set up for this component mesh, the front wheel, in the control dictionary. The schemes over here, we also don't have to worry too much about. That will be handled mainly with the component files for the background mesh. Um, the only other things that we need to set up are the, in this property, um, in the property folder or the, the property um, tab over here, we need to set up which which will be the constant tab or the constant folder, uh, the case file. We need to set up the overset. That this basically sets up the dynamic mesh deck. So the motion function that we're going to be using is a tabulated six degree of freedom motion function, and the center of gravity for this will be. It will basically be um, the centroid or the, the, the center of the axis for uh, the, the wheel, the rotational axis. So for the front wheel, for, for, for my geometry, it's negative 0 0.00506 and 0 0.35172. Again, being very accurate here. And in terms of the six degree of freedom motion, you can import CSV files um, and you can set it up all in in uh, in over here. However, with with my case, um, I've got lots of of time data points to basically put, um, map out the motion of the of the front wheel rotating and translating. So I used different software to set up those those files and they are available i've kind of kept them separate over here so this basically this notation front wheel underscore six degree of freedom is how you should name your if you do the same approach this is how you should name the files so that you can just copy and paste them over the files that enova will create and you have to insert at least one uh, row here of of data points. So I mean, you can just do random one, 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 one everywhere for all the different types of motion. And it will now create a six degree of freedom motion. Um, it will create a six degree of freedom motion file with the same notation as I can show you here, front wheel 60OF. This is the, the notation, this is the, the name of the file that it will create. So you can basically just copy this into the case files that get, get created and overwrite them. Let's move that. So now with that created, we can just also set the boundary conditions. This just being the front wheel and the overset patch. So the front wheel will be a wall, a wall patch, um, and it will it will need a wall function because it will be it's a no slip wall and it'll be moving, but it's not it's a moving mesh. It's not a moving boundary where the where the wall where the value at the wall is set according to some sort of rotation or translation or yeah this is it's it's a moving mesh and then the overset patch needs 
to be set as a wall type that is overset. As simple as that. And then no other options or functions will be need to set up over here. We basically just need to um, export these dictionary files as they um, as we've just created it now. Because the only one that will be important is the the constant the constant folder. So here in prop over there, and which which contains the dynamic mesh dictionary information and the I suppose a bit of the control dictionary just telling them telling it that, that it's the over, that it's overset simulation and the boundary conditions of course so we can export that export that and there's no point in doing a renumber mesh because once all the meshes have been merged the the last one of the last steps will be to renumber the mesh in the, in the simulation but that will happen in the background mesh case file so we can export the dictionary files i don't really export them as ascii files it just takes up more space so we'll just name it front wheel the, the directory name front wheel and we can export that to the same folder where all the other files are and it's important to export all the component mesh um, files first. Otherwise, when you try and export the background mesh, it it needs to locate those those dictionary files. Um, it needs to locate them when when it does the same export of the dictionary files here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can move on to the rear wheel. So we can. We can save this as well, just to update all the directory setup information, and then we can close here. And we can open up the rear wheel. Okay, we can set up the open fun files here. So same procedure with, as with the front wheel, enable overset meshing and make sure it's set to an overset mesh, uh, mesh. And then we just need to set up a dummy um, time data file for the dynamic mesh dictionary. Okay, so we can enable the multi solid body motion solver and use um, the tabulated six degree freedom motion. And here we set the centroid or the, the central axis um, of the wheel. So for the rear wheel, it's zero in the X and then 1.70675. 0.3826 and we need to insert a dummy row knowing that we have a time data file um, that's been made in other software and then we can go to the boundary conditions and make sure that this is an overset type wall and make sure that the rear wheel is a no slip moving mesh wall and that's all we have to do for this background mesh for this component mesh sorry and we can disable the renumber mesh option and we can export the dictionary files. Also as a binary okay, um, directory.
Okay, and then we can move on to the last component mesh, which is the motorcycle body. Okay, so let's just save this. And then we can close and open the RR ECF file. Right, and there's our mesh. So here, pretty much same procedure. We still only have two boundary conditions. It's still a overset mesh, uh, a component mesh, and same solver uh, information. And we don't have to worry about this just yet. That's only for background mesh. Then we need to set up the constant folder. And here, we just set up the same tabulated six degree of freedom motion function. So here, the, the centroid doesn't really matter because the, this, this mesh is only translating, but I just make it the same as the front wheel. And zero point three five one seven two. And here we just insert that same dummy six degree of freedom motion um, table. So it will create that six degree of freedom motion time data file for us. A dummy one of those which we can overwrite with our other files. And then lastly, we just need to make the boundary conditions. Set the boundary conditions. So this is a moving mesh, no slip wall. And the overset patch, which is this big square, rect well, this big rectangle, purple rectangle, that will be the, that will be an overset patch. Nope, overset. Yeah. Okay, and then we can export the binary files. Also, no, no need to renumber meshes. That will happen once all the component meshes are merged. Can export export the case files, binary case files to a folder called RR. I just keep the the naming the same as what I've been working with for straight from the STL all the way through to the, the case files, just for simplicity. So there's obviously more cells, more, um, more information, more data to, in, to import, so it takes a little bit longer. Okay, so we can just save this, and then we can, set up the background mesh. Okay, so for the background mesh, there's a, a little bit more to be done. Um, you've got to keep your wits about you when setting up the case file. So we'll open up all and this few more boundaries here is no overset patch because it's the background mesh so and here we have to set up the control dictionary according to what we what what we want to actually simulate and how we want to decompose it so here we enable the overset meshing and it's a background mesh this time and recommended decomposition for um, overset meshing is either hierarchical or simple. So we'll just use hierarchical here because that's the option available. And then I'm running it on a 
eight core processor. So I'll decompose it four times in the X and twice in the Y. So that'll result in eight eight different processor files when, when the decomposition happens. Then for the control dictionary, um, we need to start it from the latest time or zero. Um, doesn't this doesn't really matter? You can just change the the latest time will be. If there's no time, then it will start from zero. Then um, we'll set the end time to three seconds because for the simulation, the motorcycle will be accelerating from zero to thirty meters per second over a period of three seconds. And here, the delta t that I'm using is well, ten or well, one times ten to the negative two to negative two, so zero point zero one seconds. This is also just coherent with the um, with the time data files that that is being used. So, oops. so here, if you look at the the time steps inside inside of here, seeing intervals of zero point zero zero one. So. Um, whether or not there is interpolation that happens if you choose a smaller time step, I'm not sure, but I also don't I don't want to have a ridiculous amount of um, time steps as well and information. So 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.01 seconds for me, I'm happy with that. And then here we want the right control to be with the time step and we'll write every 10 time steps. So every 10 time steps will have information written in 0 0.1 second in intervals. So we'll end up with 30, 30 time steps. And that obviously we don't be writing each time, we'll just get a ridiculous amount of information. And you can still visualize what's happening with the simulation quite well using 0 0.1 second intervals. 0 0.1 second write intervals. Um, runtime modifiable, it's maybe useful if, it's more useful if you want to limit the maximum current number. I'm not doing that for this simulation, that's, that's what you should be doing if you're trying to get the maximum accuracy. And then the right, the right format and all these information, um, you don't really need to change that too much. Okay, so that's the control dictionary set up. Then for the 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 different the schemes the div schemes um, I would in the finite volume schemes I wouldn't change too much here um, the settings that Innova uses are very robust um, and very stable so maybe not always as accurate I know the overset interpolation method here you might want to change this to inverse distance and um, you sometimes don't even need these parameters in here, but um, it is the recommended overset interpolation method. But maybe to start off with, you can use cell volume rate, which is more stable and first order accurate only. So you do use accuracy, but um, more stable. So we don't really need to change anything here. Then in the solution, solution schemes, um, I would add some non-orthogonal correctors, three to be specific, considering the quality of our meshes. Um, that might not be necessarily the case for your scenario, but for this case we'll be doing that. And nothing else really needs to be changed. Also very robust solution schemes here. So it's just maybe some non-orthogonal correctors that, that I would um, set up, but I know that Professor Guerrero has a kind of tips and tricks um, lecture with, um, in, with with a lot of information on how to, to set up these these uh, case files, the solution files, for max, maximum stability and accuracy if necessary. Right, then in the material section, we don't need to really set up anything. It's um, using incompressible air, so you know the, we'll just leave the standard um, transport properties there. 
then over here the we don't have to set up any initial conditions here really because well I suppose we can we can we can specify turbulence intensity but there is no velocity um, the air is moving basically the motorcycle is moving through the air so there is no velocity to set up um, yeah I think the the turbulent intensity for for air is just one percent and if you want to you can maybe use the wheelbase of the of the motorcycle so I think mine's 1.7 now 1.7 something so that should be a, a sufficient turbulent length but all all these properties will be calculated and the the um uh the k and the omega will get calculated anyway so um and the accuracy will be increased later on and then we just need to set up the overset motion so the dynamic me uh, the dynamic mesh dictionary so once again it's a tabulated six degree of freedom motion um here we oh yeah sorry this is the background mesh so because we've selected a background mesh it won't actually import it won't actually import these files but what we'll actually do is we will add in a a motion a set motion for that cell zone or to make the this body move with make this body move with the background with with the body and the wheels however it won't have it won't have a velocity but it will it will allow calculate it will allow for the background mesh and the overset mesh component meshes to calculate to, to be calculated with each other so we don't actually we don't actually set up the overset um, file here in Innova because it, it it assumes that the background mesh doesn't have any motion then here we can add functions you can maybe look at y plus or a current number which might be useful for this for um yeah for the purposes of this um simulation i'm not going to set up any functions here it just it'll just take extra time during the calculation um that you can explore uh, on your own and then what i would recommend doing here is setting up a velocity damping um option just to ensure that where the, at the overset mesh interpolation boundaries and at the boundaries of the overset in mesh, there are high velocity gradients, and um, yeah, there might be there might be some um, extreme velocities that need to be limited during the calculation. So uh, I'm I'm going to set up I'm going to set up a maximum velocity um constraint here uh, velocity damping constraint constraint just to ensure that um yeah the velocity doesn't get out of hand and i'll actually make it 120 just because that mm -hmm. it's double what the velocity will be at the maximum velocity will be um of the wheels um because the, the the surface the bottom surface of the wheel is traveling is, is actually stationary it has a velocity of zero meters per second and the top surface of the wheel has a velocity that's double what the what the um, velocity of the motorcycle is okay so i'll insert that there and just call it velocity damp one okay so that's that one set up Okay, so we just need to um, do the boundary conditions here as well. So the front and back are the blue patches. So they're basically just slip walls. And then the inlet is just an inlet. And we can give it the inlet outlet option here as well. And we can just do 
just for uh, coherency, I guess, we can just set the intensity in a turbulent length. Um, but I think it's just going to get calculated anyway. Um, and it's subsonic flow, and it's a, it's a velocity of zero because we have the motorcycle body moving through the um, moving through the air. And the low wall is is a no slip wall, which needs a wall function, and it's stationary. It's not a moving wall. In the outlet, we'll set it as an outlet, and it will have the inlet out, outlet kind of calculations, so we don't have to set those up. Um, and then the upper wall is also a slip wall. Then all we have to do is export the dictionary files. However, there is a little trick here. Because this is the background mesh, we need to keep this as your number mesh. And if you would like to, you can also have a check mesh run. Um, uh, but I'm not going to do that for this simulation. And one very important thing is because this is a background mesh, we need to have all the other case files for the component meshes open for it to actually export. So here we can just open our case files. We have to open them one at a time. And you want to open them in the, in the order of how they will be um, how these cell zones will be numbered. So um, the RR, the, the highest level um, interpolation should be the most important patches, if you will, the ones that are doing most of the motion. Um, so basically the, the RR will be the, the next least important. So the, from the background mesh, we'll go to the RR mesh, the background of the motorcycle body. And then inside that um, body or inside that mesh, we'll have the the front and the rear wheel. So they will be the top, the highest, the highest level ones. So here we can open let's do the rear wheel. And then we'll open the front wheel. And that's the order in which we want the, the interpolation to be done, basically. Right, so now that we've, we've got all our ECFs for the component meshes open, we can export the dictionary files as, as, binary, as binary files in the case folder in the directory name all. And there we have it, simple as that. So now, we can go and inspect the case files and see how they've been set up. Okay, so I'm going to save this as well, update all the information, and then, yeah, let's inspect the case files. Okay, so we've got our four component meshes, our three component meshes here, and this is the case file that contains all of the information for the simulation, um, as well as the this all run file, um, which can be which is going to be run, um, and will basically run all the merge mesh, merge mesh, merge meshes and um, overwrite uh, the, the logs and the, all that stuff. So. Yeah, this basically this this script will basically do everything for you. However, you also have to run the individual component mesh scripts as well, because there are a couple of things that happen in there. You'll also notice that there is a file for each um, for each um, tabulated six degree of freedom motion. And it's named the same as what the files are that have been created um, prior to this uh, video. And it's got the same format. So 
basically this is just like a little placeholder and we can paste that into we can paste the files in the directory above these ones and just overwrite them in this all folder and inside the dynamic mesh dictionary in constant we'll be able to see here all the cell zones except for one which we need to make have been created and they each have their own their sets of motion so while we're here we can very simply just basically copy this this um, rr body um, motion solver dictionary entry and we can just change the name of the cell zone to all which does get identified and we can keep the same center as central gravity or you know the the center of which the center at which the body is, is uh, identified and we use the front wheel axis as this center and then we can just use the same time data file um, as as the motorcycle body because it's also only translating and we just need to rename this all as well and now because of the way we've set up our boundary conditions in the um, in the boundary condition setting in in Enova, this body will this all body the background mesh will move with RR, but it doesn't have it doesn't it doesn't attain a velocity. So it you'll you'll see in the results section we will see from the results that although the body is moving, it's it's actually still got a zero a zero velocity the inlet um, as the motorcycle kind of moves through it. So and all the results that you get um, do kind of line up with what you would expect of a motorcycle moving through air. So we can just save this. And there's one other um, thing that needs to be added to the control dictionary. So if we go to the control dictionary in this, um, in the all uh, case file, there's just a line of code that needs to be added so that when the merge mesh, when the merging of the meshes happens, um, the overset patches don't, they, they overwrite each other because there can only be one overset patch in an overset simulation. So we need to source the, the, um, the, the, the library, the overset library. The overset. Okay, so that needs to be written like that. Let's just make sure. Yes. And now we should have all our. Now we have all our. Um, file, case files set up and we can run this as you would normally run an open phone simulation in um, in open phone. Mind you, we just do need to copy over and replace the files here. And you can paste the new ones. Okay, so I've got the results here. I've run each all run from the uh, component meshes and also the background mesh all run, which does all the mesh merging and actually runs the simulation. And I've recomposed all the, all the different processor directories, the, the written data. So you can also view that in Paraview. So over here you can see the background mesh. And let's just do this. So here, this region here is the background mesh, and then we've got the the RR 
body, the motorcycle body, inside of a, another overset patch in there. And then each wheel is surrounded with an overset patch as well. Can't really see this too well. But if we were to say, um, if we were to threshold, here we can threshold using the zone ID. And we'll have zone zero will be the background mesh. Zone one will be the, the first component mesh with, with the motorcycle body. And then two and three would be the front and the rear wheels. So we can, we can threshold above upper threshold and then set that to like 0 0.99 or something. So we still have one included. And then you can see there the inside of this. Mm -hmm. I think it's just looking, it looks funny like this on the inside because of the, the decomposing of the polyhedra. So we can try and remove that. Um, Put it back on. That should sort out the problems, these weird lines going through. Yeah, so there we go. That's just a slice of the body, and yeah, you can see the overset. The overset patches of the wheels they go over the um, the domain they go outside the domain but yeah this is actually the wheel surface the inner surface of this of this um, bit over here so yeah with this you can we can visualize I've, I've basically done this and followed this data through all the times and I've created a video for you to see how the how the basically how the um, how the wake forms and how the domain looks after running for a bit of time. Let's put that here. So there you can kind of see how it develops. So obviously this this is not the most accurate of solutions. You can see there's some funny stuff happening in the rear at the rear wheel there that i think is where a lot of the velocity damping happened um but overall you can see the wake and this this mesh can be improved on to try and get better results so yeah that's that's what we can do using this overset overset meshing strategy with innova well i hope this video was useful and helpful um, and I hope that Innova brings you as much success as it did with, with my simulations. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, James, for, for your presentation. That was fantastic presentation, fantastic work. I really, really enjoyed it. And I wasn't expecting no, that, that you, you, you were able to, to, to do uh, such a nice uh, simulation with the minimum support from from the Nova uh, side. Uh, something that I would like to mention that in the in the last figure that you show that those artifacts that you have around the wheel mainly that is due to uh, orphan cells that you have there. So for other users, you know that that is due to that. For for other users, people watching this video, so have in mind that if you refine your mesh in those areas close to the wheel, you will be able to reduce those errors. But what is important to mention here is that this method uh, it requires a, a different way of thinking. You know, it's not the usual way that we think when we do meshes here. You need to plan. Uh, you need to plan a, a priori how to generate the mesh, how to create the mesh. It's not like creating uh, component meshes one, two, three, four, six, ten component meshes and then trying to intersect them together. There are specific techniques 
uh, a method methodologies to 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 resolve uh to get the 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 general mesh the the whole assembly and also to mention that this met methodology over set meshes is not something new some people think that now you know in the 2020 or the last 20 10, 10 years you have over mesh overset meshes that somebody created or somebody developed no this is not something new the overset meshes exist since the first cfd simulations in the late 70s it was created and you might be aware that at the beginning everything was with over uh, with uh at the beginning, every we the the, uh, the uh, people doing CFD simulation were using uh, structure meshes, and if you ha and in the case of complex geometries, generating uh, uh, mesh structure meshes for for that kind of ge uh, geometries is quite difficult. So this was a way around, you know, creating a small patches and then you connect them together and then you provide this interpolation to pass the information from one to the other. So it's something very old since the beginning, then immediately was indeed identified that it was very, very useful uh, uh, for moving meshes and then the uh, all the develop developments since then has been focused now in moving bodies, the most difficult simulations now that you can do in CFD, you do it using overset meshes. Of course, you can use also adaptive mesh refinement, automatic refinement and so on, but they tend to be more expensive. So you can see the big advantage of using this, this methodology. So I think, uh, again, I want to thank uh, James for, for the presentation kudos for the work, fantastic work. Also to uh, all the people in the academia that would like to test and know our use for, for their research. Remember that you can cut, contact us and we might be able to give you access to an academic li license you know, to conduct your research work. So thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you in our next video. So during this month of December 2023, we have dedicated to overset meshes. So we're releasing a lot of material. So hopefully we're going to also uh, uh, put uh, in our uh, YouTube channel in the playlist, uh, some other videos, much, much easier than this one. But anyways, Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.